Lord God, we acknowledge you as the true and living Elohim yes, of Israel. Yes. yes, Lord. Father, we acknowledge you as the God of Abraham, Amen. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father, we acknowledge you as the God of Grace Message Church. Yes. yes. Father, we acknowledge you as the God of our personal home. Yes. yes. And Father, as we come to you this morning, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. For Father, your word say, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Yes. And every tongue should yes. confess yes. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Father, your word said it should, but Lord God, we do. Yes. Thank we you. do, Lord God. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, Lord God. Yes. We acknowledge him, Lord God, as our personal Savior. Yes. Father, we acknowledge him, Lord God, as the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Now, yes. Father, as we come to you, we ask of you, Lord God, that you will feed us this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord God, we came here hungry. Yes. As we pull up the restaurants, Lord God, we smell the food, the aroma coming from the building. Lord God, we smelled your presence. Yeah. And Lord God, we are hungry this morning, Lord God, yes. and we ask of you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. Lord God, that you will touch your servant. Yes, yes. Lord God. And Father, that you will give her the skills that she need, Lord yes. God, as a yes. master chef, yes. Lord God, yes. and a master the builder in yes. your kingdom, Lord God, yes. that she may feed us, Lord God, that meal that we're craving for. Yes. And Father, that she may put some more putty, stucco, or whatever we need, that we can grow up yes. as one full building in you. Thank yes. you, Father. Father, yes. inhabit us yes. with your presence, and Father, we'll be more than careful to give your name the praises. Yes. Yes. These things we ask and believe that we have received. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Now raise your right hand. Say, thank God. Thank God. God for the woman of God. For the woman of God. Thank you, Lord. I feel like the price is right. <laughs> Dave was so nervous here. Wasn't he came over to go to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it was like that. <laughs> but yeah, we were, we were going to stand up and walk over to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I was super happy. Yeah, but you made me see it. Did anybody have a chance this week to spend some time in the food for thought? Mm -hmm. not, not the one that God had me right, but the one that God had Jerry right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eight pages, if you put it all together and print it out, is what the five parts are right now. So last night, you know, the message is ready, but it's never really ready. You always have to make sure that it's, you know. And so last night I, I said, okay, I'm going to do the food for thought from today, and then I'll, then I'll get back into my message. So I get about four lines into the food for thought, and I was like, oh. Okay, I gotta put the food for thought aside for a second because I have to get into my message. Yeah. Because if anybody just read it, you have no idea what it was talking about. I don't care what anybody says. That's right. Okay. That's right. Because there was so much, and I am not giving Jerry credit. I'm giving all the glory to God. Yes. And again, I'm not giving Jerry credit, but. And all the years that Jerry has been sending us yes. by email first, yeah. and then the circle questions and food for thoughts, I really see that this is the best written epistle that he has ever put out there because of the deep connections that he has made Amen. and made it plain all throughout. I have, they've, they're all good and they're mm -hmm. all profound. But this one for me was deeper than. And it's stuff a lot of us knew, but could we connect together. on our own. Mm -hmm. I have never, ever, ever been, like I said, this was the best epistle. And so for that, we need to give God some praise. Because if 
Jerry is increasing. Yeah. We're getting ready to increase. That's right. That's right. Right? right. That's right. He got his house. That's right. He got his increase. That's right. Now it's our turn. Right? Right? Today we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 6. And the title for today's message is Hope Floats. Yeah. <laughs> Hope Floats. Does everybody remember that movie? Yeah. yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> F L O W S. F L O A T S. F L O A T S. Hope float. And we're going to come from 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And before we read that, I do, if you've been following along the Food for Thought, which I'm sure you have, you have the full understanding that Elisha, who we're going to be talking about today, is symbolic of whom? You have Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. So you all been said you've been doing the food for thoughts this week. So Elisha is symbolic of whom? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. oh. Elisha is symbolic of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? He has the he has a double portion of the anointing that Elijah had. Elijah, John the Baptist, had the down payment of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Once he descended into the Jordan, and the Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove, he walked in the fullness. So Elijah, John the Baptist, Elisha, Jesus Christ. Is everybody clear on that? Because if you're not, I'm just going to tell you, go back and read. No, I'm sorry. Don't read. Study. Go back and actually study the food for thought this time instead of just reading it. See, there's always a test that's going to pop up. Mm -hmm. You should know that by now. Yeah. Let me go down. I want to go down and read through these, these six verses before we start. And today, again, is, is teaching with a little bit of ministry thrown in. So today I have been ordered to give you some definitions so you can clearly see what's really going on in this picture. And verse 1 reads, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell, dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Let's start in verse 1. And I want you to explain, I want you to understand what the term sons of prophets are. It's a school of learners. It's those in training in the word of God. It's disciples under Elisha. The school itself was started by Elijah, or built by Elijah, mm -hmm. carried through by Elijah. In ministry, John the Baptist had one message, right? Mm -hmm. Repent. That started the process to point to Jesus, just as Elijah starts a process that points to Elijah. Yeah. The person or the ministry that follows 
is always going to have more than what started the ministry. Are we mm -hmm. together so far? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me tell you what these sons were. What are you smiling at? The son of Mark has to Okay. These sons, for the word sons, I do not want you to put builder or repairer as we normally do. Because you need to understand here, it's talking about their condition. Because the word sons means condition or afflicted. It was the condition or the afflictions of these disciples that actually caused them to speak against Elisha, their head. How do I know that? Because the word unto, where it says, and the sons of prophets said, unto Elisha, means against. They spoke against their head or their overseer or their superintendent, mm -hmm. or their bishop. Mm -hmm. Because of the condition, or their, or their head, or the affliction that they were in. And you're right, that's important to note, because we're going to pick up that later. He was the head, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And here's what they say against the God of supplication and riches. That's Elisha's name. God of supplication and riches. And they say, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight. Their afflictions cause them to feel in their body and in their mind. Because the word place means condition of body and mind. Now let me back up for a minute and explain this to you. After Elijah was taken away, Gehazi became king and he was evil and he, and he oppressed and afflicted these sons of the prophet. And so upon his removal and death, they flocked back to Elisha. So there were too many, what they felt, there were too many people, it was too crowded. There were too many people in this one dwelling place, physically. Spiritually, that's not what it's talking about. What they're saying is that in their condition of their mind, they were afflicted, and they thought that the way was too hard for them. Because the word stress, or straight means distress, troubled, afflicted. What's that? MSEM. Yes, it's here that the whole thing's happening. We say the battle always starts in your mind. That was the condition of their mind. Now, I want you to notice <coughs> something. Even though we know that sons mean condition, they're still called sons, right? They're not called servants. Mm -hmm. They're called sons here. Right. Were you with me so far? So if Jesus and Elisha represent each other, that means that we have to find what we see in 2 Kings somewhere in the life of Jesus. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 14. Yes, seven fourteen. Because straight is the gate. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That word narrow means affliction, trouble, tribulation. They were in the right place with the wrong 
mindset. They were disciples. They were learners. They were learning God's word with the wrong state of mind. Luke 13, 24, you don't have to go there, backs this up. They were uncomfortable. Understand this. If you are in your right dwelling place in God, mm -hmm. you should not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you are comfortable, you are in the wrong place. If you are doing things as you've always done them, well, I've always done it this way. This is what always worked. I always wrote this letter like this. I don't see what's wrong with it. Why can't I keep doing it? <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Because you're always pushed into a season of uncomfortableness to help you grow, to see new things. Some of the best advice I ever got was, you're, it's not that your way isn't fine, but it's not the way that God wants you to do it. Right. And you're not going to elevate or increase until do you do it the way right. God wants That's you right. to do it. Right. And I couldn't, I really, at first I was like, but there's, because there wasn't anything bad or right. wrong with what I was doing. That's right, that's right. But it still wasn't what so God, God was wants. telling me. That's right. And so, several years ago, Jerry said to me, <laughs> you have a very high calling on your life, right? So, of course, I was like, I know, right? Because, you know, pride mm -hmm. enters in. And then he said, but you're nowhere near where you need to be. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> you don't do it the way God tells you to do it. Mm -hmm. So I knew then mm -hmm. things had to change. But to get to that point mm -hmm. took a long time, didn't it, Ben? A long time. A long time and a lot of That's time. A long time. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm still not there. But that's not what we need to look at. We need to look at the fact that we are closer than right. we were yeah. Right. Yeah. on the journey, right? Yeah. right? So if we're closer than we were before, that means we're moving forward, forward, forward right? That's, right? that's what the command is for us. Yeah. Sheep walk forward. That's what we have to do as long as you're moving forward. Yes? Yes. I just told you there's a new leader. Elijah had been taken into heaven, translated by chariots of fire, right? Huh? That is serious elevation, right? He was moving forward. <laughs> so there was a new leader, right? So whenever there's a new leader or a new guy in town, that means that the location is going to change. That means you're going to move into a different realm mm -hmm. where your old leader couldn't God take you, mm -hmm. right? John the Baptist preached mm -hmm. in the wilderness, but he preached mm -hmm. repentance, mm -hmm. okay? Jesus Christ went further to teach the, kingdom. the, the gospel, right. which is the, the kingdom, kingdom. Right. right? There was a moving yeah. on. on. So, if I receive a new leader, and you get a new leader, that means that you're going into unknown or unchartered territory. Are you going to be comfortable? No. 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 Are you going to want to do it? No. no. Are you going to fight against it? Yeah. Yes. 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 Every step of the way. Kicking and screaming. Yes. <laughs> yes, Debbie, as Jerry says, you're going, either yeah. willingly or kicking and screaming. <laughs> and some of us have got really, really strong leg muscles now. <laughs> kicking and screaming for the last three years, right? That's right. right? That's right. I love you and I'll do whatever you want. Just don't make me do what God tells you to make me do. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, if it happened here, <laughs> it had to happen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Turn to John 6, 6, 6. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And it reads, From that time, many of, dis many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Because narrow, 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 and straight, straight, it's too hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I would do if I wanted easy? I'd go back to the church on the hill that we came from. <laughs> yeah. Because looking back, that was so <laughs> easy. easy. Uh -huh. So easy. I didn't think it at the time, mm -hmm. but looking back now, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Whew, yeah. that was a breeze. Go Sunday, sit on pew, clap, sweat, do a few circles, I'm done. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Bring your own dress, don't wear no makeup, look ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was easy. Yeah, it right? Was. Yeah. Get out of the shower, slip your hair back in your bun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was real. easy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, it was easy. <laughs> so in verse 2, back in, in, in 2 Kings, it says that they want, they asked to go to make, to the Jordan to make a new dwelling place. Now remember, the verse I just gave you was John 6, 6, 6. So there has to be something to do with six in this verse too, right? Mm -hmm. And so in doing some research, what I found was that, number one, it had to be something to do with the Jordan because it was so specific, right? Mm -hmm. They could say, well, we want to go to the wilderness or we want to go to the plains or we want to go to the river. Right. But it was a specific location. So why the Jordan? The Jordan was the location where they last saw Elijah. Or John the Baptist, who had a baptizing ministry and baptized in the Jordan River. That's why they went back there. So, but this is this is what's even more interesting. This, remember I said 666? Six, six, six? Mm -hmm. This location was six miles from their new dwelling place. And the number six means? Manifestation, Manifestation of, of sin. Man. Wickedness of man. Wickedness of man and, and the evil of Satan. Mm -hmm. That was the condition of their mind, the condition of their bodies that we talked about in the very beginning of verse 1 where it says, sons of prophet. It was because of their afflictions, their trials, their tribulations, that they wanted to go back to the place of comfort. To see Elijah. A place of comfort. If you are experiencing trials, tribulations, afflictions, you're doing something right. If you're not, that's when you need to be nervous. Yeah. And uncomfortable. Check it. And yeah. uncomfortable. Okay. Yes. 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 I, as Paul says, am content in all situations. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm comfortable. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. There you go. That that's is right. right. <laughs> that's right. I have. That's right. I have right. everything I need. That's right. I won't have everything I. Want. That's right. That's right. It ain't right? gonna go your way. That's Ever. right. Mm -hmm. God does this new thing with me now where it's so interesting how he does it because you know how I'm very orderly, mm -hmm. obsessively orderly. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There are benefits to that. Yes, there yeah, are. Right. There right. are. But in the kingdom, however, <laughs> yeah, I, there can be things that hold you back when you're obsessively orderly. That's right. Okay? That's right. So God started this new thing with me oh. about a month ago. And I know it was a test, and I knew I had to pass it. He stopped giving me messages early. Get a teach Saturday? Saturday morning, 4 a.m. Now it's time to message. We're going to do a message now. It's about time! I've been stressing for three days over this. But he had to test me. Do you yeah. trust me? That's no what it was all about. Do you trust mm -hmm. that before you go, 
you're going to hear the message to give to the people. And so about two weeks ago, I had to teach. It was a Friday night. I had nothing. Seven o'clock. I had lots of things, but I knew nothing that was supposed to be taught. And I said, okay, I'll see you in the morning. I slept so well that night. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, 3.56 a.m., ding, 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 time for the message. But I had finally passed the test. Mm -hmm. Right. I knew that he would give it to me. I just had to be ready for it. And so in doing that, now he gives it to me any time. But that was a big test Mm -hmm. for me to be able to pass, Mm -hmm. was to know that, just trust me. Just trust me. And I can guarantee whenever the message is really meant to hit home, Mm -hmm. there's going to be something that comes in your mind that says to you, that's the wrong message for today. You're Mm -hmm. not supposed to be teaching that today. Mm-hmm. I don't think your word lines up. You better double check it. Mm-hmm. Am I right? That's right. And every time, I just close my notebook. I'm not touching it. Mm-hmm. Because I know that's not God's voice. Mm-hmm. I know that's the hindrance trying to come in right. to stop the message from going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is everybody still with me? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So, I said that they, the, they were in the location. I don't know if I gave you this or not, but they were six miles from their present location, which was Gilgal. And you can find that in 2 Kings 4 and 38. And we're going to move back there in a little while, but I just wanted to give you that little piece there. 2 Kings 4 and 38. Back in verse 2, they asked to go to the Jordan, and Elisha replies, go. That word go means be weak. Be weak. The Jordan was actually behind where they were, because Gilgal was in the promised land. When you leave the wilderness, you cross the Jordan and move into the promised land. They were headed back towards the wilderness here. Mm-hmm. But interesting, because you can actually flip that. The Bible says that when I am weak, he is strong. Elisha knew what it was going to take for the sons of the prophets to move back into the realm that they were supposed to be in. They had to realize their weakness before they could be made strong. Now, if you want the reference to the promised land, it's Genesis 11, verse 7. But in verse 2, verse, yes, verse 2, we're going to back up a little bit because they don't want to just go to the Jordan. They want to take something with them. It's a beam. They want to take a beam with them. So let me help you understand what the beam is. Because if you look at it just surface, you're going to think it's a piece of wood or timber, right? Mm -hmm. Beam means destroy and break down. Destroy and break down. Now, a beam is used to do what? Wood, tree, timber. What do you do with that? Build. You build, right? Mm-hmm. They were trying to erect what had already been torn down in their lives. Mm-hmm. <coughs> trying to make a temple for themselves, just like Babel. Interesting. Let me, let me I heard you, Lord. Let me give you this. How many people in here have ever moved into a new home? Gee, I think I can think of two right off. (laughs) Do you ever notice that when you move into a new home, your tendency first is to make it comfortable? 
And many times when you make your new home comfortable, it looks just like your old your home. You put the TV on the same wall, you put the shelf on the same wall, you put the couch facing the same direction, your bed has to face the same direction because if it's not facing the same direction, you can't sleep well. <laughs> if you're trying to have children and your bed's not facing the right direction, you may not be fertile. That's a that's a, a fertility goddess myth that yeah. lots of women follow, if I'm being honest, mm -hmm. right? Everything about it has to be comfortable. Yeah. What, you used to. what you used to do. Erecting what has already been torn down. Your last house or your last apartment or your last shack, whatever you've lived in, is gone. It's torn down. This is your new place. Mm -hmm. You can't build it with old stuff. Yeah. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. What God has torn down in your life, when you come to a place of hardship and uncomfortableness, you begin to resurrect or erect those things that you've already conquered in your life mm -hmm. to make you feel comfortable again because it's normal. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a very easy example for you to understand. How many of you have ever smoked in here and quit? How many times you quit? Yes. I was just going to say that's exactly, exactly where I was going. How many now, how many times, times have you quit? Uh, many. Many times. Okay. Yeah. You conquered it. Okay? Yeah. Because anybody who quits for more than seven days has broken the habit. Right. Okay? But when something in your life that makes you uncomfortable or causes hardship in your life comes back up, What's the first thing you think about doing to oh, relieve your stress? I'm going to buy a pack of yeah. smokes. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And you smoke the whole thing as fast as you can. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. You've resurrected or erected something that has already been torn down in your life. That's a physical example for you. Mm -hmm. So, what is the beam? Okay, because you can add Acts 738, 748, I'm sorry, with a with to this. You don't have to turn there, but add it there. Okay. Acts 7, 48. When you have a beam, it's something that you construct with your hands. It's manufactured. It's not of God. Watch this. Your hands are symbolic of your ministry, right? Right. It's using your ministry in the wrong way. To serve yourself and not serve its purpose. Mm -hmm. So what was it that happened in Gilgal that they were turning away from? Because something happened at Gilgal that changed them. It changed their walk. It changed their headship. It changed who they were. Anybody have any because idea? Because they were going backwards? Uh, no, before that. When they arrived at Gilgal, something happened. Does anybody know what it is? It's okay if you don't. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. They were circumcised at Gilgal. Circumcision exposes what? The head. The head right? Mm -hmm. Right. When you go back, you're moving back into uncircumcision mm -hmm. where the head is covered again. They were not following Elisha. They wanted Elisha to follow yeah. them. That's a condition of an uncircumcised heart. No head show. It's a church leading the leadership. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing here. So, in the next part, it talks about they asked Elijah if they could go, and he tells them to go, right? Mm -hmm. But it continues on later to say that Elisha went also. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And it reads, And one said, Be content, I pray thee, 
and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. No longer sons, but servants. Mm -hmm. That's backwards. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bond servant, it's a man servant here. Serving self. You are supposed to move from the realm of servant to son, not son to servant. Does everybody understand mm -hmm. that? They move, okay. Does everybody understand that even though they were in the promised land, they never really got to the promised land. They were always kind of in the wilderness. Does everybody understand that? There's a couple of reasons. One, one is very simple for you to understand. And this is the one I'm going to go with. And if you want to add on to it, go right ahead. Okay. Um, in the promised land, okay, when we receive the fullness, if we sin, we die. Yeah. Okay. God could not be in the presence of sin. Right. They moved into the promised land, but still sinned. Mm -hmm. So even though they actually crossed the Jordan, mm -hmm. they actually it was all actually a wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. Because the Jordan doesn't happen until the crossing of the Jordan and the fullness doesn't happen until the future or the end. Right. Can you make that any plainer? You remember when you said home in your house many a day saying, Lord, you said I should pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I never was in your house with you. Right. But when you received the revelation of right. that man ain't crazy, <laughs> I can see this, Lord. So that means I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Yeah, you said right. those same things in the same location. Yes. yes. The location didn't change. Right. Wow. It's your mind right. that, that right. changed. Yes. Yeah. You, you get it? Yeah. Okay. Want me to keep talking? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, with Elijah, I mean Elijah and the prophets, the prophets was going back. Mm -hmm. And I'm in total agreement, mm -hmm. but I'm just slipping it. Yes. But they took a beam mm -hmm. from where they were, mm -hmm. which it was the uh, roof. As a covering yes. in an old spot, mm. which is not designed for. Mm. Let, let me change it. Let me change it. They went to the outer court mm. with the altar of incense, or the showbread, or the candlestick, which is not designed for, for that realm. Mm -hmm. wow. They're trying to erect a new realm. In our old place. Are you with me so far? Okay, let me flip it again. God always, when man had a, am I talking too fast? Nope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll wait for a moment. Okay. When God always wanted to meet with man, God always said, don't have a relationship with your wife. Right. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. God always said, don't have a relationship with your wife. Let me explain to you why. Because when you have un a relationship with your wife before you meet with God, you become uncircumcised mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Because the flesh is covering the reproductive system yes. again. You are uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. So the sons of prophet mm -hmm. was following the church. Yes. And they became uncircumcised again. Mm -hmm. So for the man of God to circumcise them again, he had to go back with them. Yes. <laughs> to bring them back. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you, he's going to have to work a miracle in a familiar realm. Okay, I'm going to share that. That's, mm -hmm. right. no, that's, that's why he went. He had to go. In the new, okay, so in the Gospels. When Jesus himself said, you leave the 99 yeah. to go get the one, one. Mm -hmm. you have to go. Back it up. Go tell my disciples and Peter. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. because of the division. Bring them back. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The division had happened. Remember? Yeah. Peter denied Christ 
Thrice. Thrice. Mm -hmm. He had to be called all over again. Mm -hmm. Disciples, he wasn't a disciple anymore. So where he went back to? Fish. Because he went back yes. to what he had known before. That's right. Good. Are you with us so far? I say yeah. us. Yeah. Of yeah. course. You took a jump. So anyway, so he says, but but watch this. Okay, this is really interesting in verse 3. The one, which was probably the leader speaking to Elisha, speaking for the whole. Okay, Peter spoke to Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. speaking for the whole, whole That's right? right? He's right. going to be the next leader. Mm -hmm. And he says, be content. Mm -hmm. And we talked about being content, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now... Remember the state or the condition that they were in. Right. When you have churches in this condition, they never want the words of leadership to bring them up or elevate them or pull them out of the pit they're in. They always want to bring leadership down yeah. to their level. Yeah. He says, be content. That means mentally weak. Mm -hmm. That was the condition or the mindset of the servants or the sons of the prophet at this point. Mm -hmm. They were trying to bring Elisha down to their level. But he's way, way, way smarter than that. Or should I say anointed than that, right? Mm -hmm. So they know he's anointed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why else would they want him to come with them? They know the protection and the covering that he has. Right. And by coming with them to them, it was like blessing their work. Right. You have it so far? Mm -hmm. Verse 4. <coughs> so, so he went with them and they came to Jordan, right? Yeah. Came means invade. 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 That wasn't where they belonged anymore. It was strange land, strange territory to them now. And you can find in Numbers 13, 29, who occupied that place now. It wasn't theirs. But that, okay, think about this. Oh, oh, I got it. <clears throat> you ever have David and down and out? <laughs> right? We all do, right? It happens. Sometimes our mind takes us to places or invades spaces that we used to live, things that we used to do, and we find comfort in that. Mm -hmm. Or you want to do. Or you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's comforting. Our mind invades territory that we are no longer supposed to be part of. Future, what you want to do, mm -hmm. or past, what you've done. It says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, right? Right. It happens to all of us. That's right. That's right. Certain smells. That's right. Certain temperatures. That's right. Certain movies, music, mm -hmm. right? You see a kid... Downtown cruising around, the song pops up, and you're like, Oh, I remember the day. I remember right? That. And I can guarantee, guarantee, start watching, keeping track of this. It's going to be when you're going through a hard time mm -hmm. spiritually that these things are going to pop up. Secondly, it's going to be in a time you think everything is great <laughs> that they're going to pop up. I can be going along thinking things is great. Right in the middle of teaching, I get this thought. What the heck is going on here? What just happened to me? Right? Right? Yeah. It invades where you're supposed to be. You've now gone into foreign land. Okay? This foreign or strange land is supposed to be uncomfortable for you. Not what you're in now. Because that's not where you're supposed to be. But we're feeling comfort in it. Foreign land mm -hmm. 
even though it's comfortable to us, mm -hmm. spiritually, it's not supposed to be because it's inhabited by others. Mm -hmm. For example, your apartment, as small as it was, that was your normal mm -hmm. for every day, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you moved out. Somebody else is going to rent that apartment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Already. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, if you go back and open the door, like, hey, babe, I'm home, that shouldn't be a comfortable situation, correct? Because mm -hmm. it's not your home anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to have that mentality. When we, these, when they went back to the place they used to be, it was occupied by, like, five other groups of foreign nations. They should not have found comfort mm -hmm. in going back. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't find comfort in going back, mm -hmm. but we do. Can I explain it a different way? Yes. You ever broke up with someone for five years? This is just an example. Five years later, you hook back up with that same person? Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. not like it was the first time? Yeah. Right. And you saying to yourself, why in the world I got back with you? Yes. It's worse than what it was. It was. Right. And but it's five it's years like later? picked up. <laughs> The right. argument and fight where you left off. That's right. Why I got back with you? I might be crazy. <laughs> but then five all years after that, uh -huh. the same yeah. thing happens all over again. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You always go back to what's comfortable. Is everybody seeing this? Mm -hmm. So let's continue in verse 4. And it says, so Elijah went with them. And they came to Jordan. They cut down wood. So I need to break it down with some definitions here for you. Cut down, I want you to use the word divide. <laughs> for wood, I'm going to give you two. A tree from its firmness, and to close the eyes shut. <laughs> now, when you see to close the eyes shut, that means that when your eyes are closed physically, they're open spiritually. Yes. So it's spiritual vision. Spiritually, men are seen as trees. That's Mark 8:24. They were dividing themselves. You within you are divided. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have the flesh part of you, and you have the spirit part of you. The word himself. Now watch. Elijah is symbolic of Jesus Christ. The word himself who said, I came... Not to bring peace, but to bring division. Yeah. Division. Turn to Luke 3 and 9. Because again, we have to see what's in the future. Luke chapter 3, verse 9. Oh, and we just happen to be in John the Baptist ministry here. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You are a You get that? Yes? Yes. That's why some of your friends died young. That yeah. you've been with. Mm -hmm. That you grew up with and people you know. And you'd be wondering why they died so young. Mm -hmm. But they was a good person. person. But they was yeah. a productive they don't to the kingdom. kingdom. They, don't, they, they just were yes. good to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of times we say... You know, and I found myself saying it. They didn't deserve that. None of us deserve to live. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. We only live because by the grace of God. That's right. And the God. fact that our job is not done. 
Right. Okay. Right. So when we say, I don't like to see people hurting. No. I really don't. And grieving. Right. Oh, speaking of grieving. Remember I said that it means also meant a tree from its firmness mm -hmm. back in Second Kings for the word wood. Right. What they were really doing was cutting down their firmness. Your firmness is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And when you cut it down, it's called grieving the, Holy Spirit. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had not learned to work their manure. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. explain that. And the manure is the trials and tribulations that come into your life. Why couldn't it get on my nerves so bad? <laughs> It's nothing to do with Courtney. Right. The thing is with me. Yes. And I have to stop looking at her and start looking at the manure in my life that I have to start working to make me better and make me grow. Yes. Because fertilizer or done is put around a tree. That's a nasty smelling stuff. Mm -hmm. That you don't you put on gloves to touch. But you watch this, you put on gloves to put Done around the apple tree, yeah. but that don't get into the apple and you make apple pie. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know, it's so interesting. Fruit. Fruit. Yeah. What did yeah. you say? Yeah. Produces great fruit. Yeah. Produces yeah. great fruot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, Courtney and I were talking the other day about passing tests, and, and I said, we've got to stop saying that because I'm done with this test. I want this test to be over. Because we knew that mm -hmm. we were we were not passing mm -hmm. just by the things we were speaking mm -hmm. and so it's time mm -hmm. to pass the test yeah. so we have to learn to keep our mouths yeah. shut yes yeah. watch this think of it like this oh. <clears throat> the hidden mysteries of God they're for sons mm -hmm. not servants, not servants. Right. Right. They were sons first, servants second. Mm -hmm. They were cutting down all the hidden mysteries that God had shown them. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing. And how are you shown? By the Holy Ghost that makes the word alive. They were grieving the Spirit. Can I go first? Yes. They was also cutting down their self. Because the Holy Ghost hides you. Right. And the enemy in the land now. Mm -hmm. And by them cutting it down, they was exposing themselves mm -hmm. and making themselves vulnerable for an attack. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's very good. That is very good. God has told me to stop there. We're not going to go to verse 5 and 6 today, but maybe some other times. David? When you got ready to stop, you looked up like you, somebody called your name and you looked right into his eyes. Yeah. I, I was watching. That's what it, that's uh -huh. like that. That's what happened. 